Opening moments of the first half of play against Creighton. Louisville and Creighton. Buford pull up for three. No good. Loose ball rebounded inside by Alexanders. Gus, we've already seen the Louisville press have an effect in this game. A steal and a dunk by the Cardinals early. Louisville seeded seventh. Creighton, a number 10 seed. Cameron Murray, Tony Williams, Sanders, Johnson on the floor. Here's Johnson, kicks it back out. Sanders, straightaway three. Got it. Gus, every one of these fellas out on the court for Louisville can hit the three-point basket. Sanders, an outstanding three-point shooter, even though he plays the center position for Louisville. Louisville up 9-2. And there's a the full court pressure. Ryan Sears, the sophomore, getting it over the line to Ben Walker. That Louisville pressure has really disrupted the Creighton offense. Back door, Buford double clutch and banks it home. Yes, this is the young man who scored more than 2,000 points in his college career. If he gets some opportunities, he'll light it up. Skip pass, Williams. Buford, the active leading scorer in the NCAA tournament. Gus and Doug Swenson for Creighton really looks like he's exhausted, almost like he's sick or something. He can barely run up and down the court. All knocked away and out of bounds. And a look at who's on the floor right now for Creighton. Sears, Walker, Swenson, Johnson, and Buford. Swenson checks out. And Nereus Karlakanovas comes in. Murray, Maben, Sanders, Johnson, and Williams for Louisville. So Creighton coming into this game. 21 and 8, 11 and 7 in the Missouri Valley Conference. They're coached by Dana Altman. His fifth year has improved the team's record five consecutive seasons. And they won its league record fifth Missouri Valley Tournament title, beating Evansville 70-61. That's just great quickness by Williams. The lob, Sanders, and it sails out of bounds. And the bracket here in the South Region. Maryland advancing. They dispose of Valparaiso. And they await the winner of this one. St. John Sanford, Indiana GW are still to come. And Louisville with that pressure. The Cardinals really like to pressure and get after you. Their team likes to get the ball out in transition and go. Sears turns it over into the front court. Murray to Williams and he slams it home. Creighton is not a team that turns the ball over a lot, but that's a couple of turnovers early now, and Louisville has made him pay. Creighton averages 15 turnovers per game, and Buford foul coming up the floor. The head coach of Louisville, one of the best all-time, Denny Crum, in his 28th season. A win today gives Denny a 20-win season in 22 seasons, if you understand what I mean. 20 wins in 22 seasons. And he has won two national championships. Gus, overall, Louisville, the Louisville program under Denny Crum, as well as before Denny Crum took over as coach, this program has been to the NCAA tournament more times than anybody except UCLA, Kentucky, and North Carolina. So a lot of NCAA tournament tradition here. Buford, 15-footer, partially blocked by Sanders. And Johnny Johnson is there for the follow. Louisville's not a great rebounding team. They only out-rebounded eight of their opponents thus far on the year. And here's Creighton with a little pressure. Three-quarter court broken easily by Cameron Murray, the transfer from USC. And Creighton drops back into a zone, a 3-2 or 1-2-2 zone. Buford playing on the top. Long arms can really create some problems out there. Bounce pass to Deion Edward, a junior from Cincinnati. Back to Murray. Down low. Great look. Sanders lays it in. A no-look over-the-head pass, Gus. That was pretty impressive. Murray leads the Cardinals in assists, and you can see why. Make that Nate Johnson. Here's Walker inside, reverse layup. And here's the kid that's really been improving for Creighton. Only six feet two, but he does a great job rebounding inside. Gives Creighton the ability to play a very quick team. Nate Johnson from Camden, New Jersey. Play for Clarence Turner there. That ended connection and a foul away from the basketball. And that's Eric Johnson, and that is just not a good foul at all. He practically went up and grabbed Buford. Foul is on number 43. Johnson is first. 15.09 to go in the first half of play. Louisville on top 13-8. Five. Now let's go to Barry Booker. 
Thanks, Gus. Six weeks ago, Louisville wasn't sure they'd be allowed to play in the NCAA tournament, but they appealed the decision by the NCAA and won, and now they're here, and they feel like they're playing with the house's money, trying to make a run in the NCAA deep into the tournament. And we also had some rumors that Denny Crum was, might call it quits after this season. Tom Durich, the athletic director, was offered a 13-year extension, and he wanted Crum to look him in the eye and tell him that Crum was going to be around. Crum did that. He said he's going to be here, and now they're looking to make a run at Dean Smith's all-time NCAA wins record. Back to you, Gus. All right, Barry. Nereus Karlakonovas with the jump hook inside, and Creighton cuts it to three. Louisville up 13-10, and Creighton gets back into the zone. Gus Creighton's zone has forced Louisville to play in the half court, and the Cardinals not as effective in the half court as they are when they can get out and run. And Cameron Murray banking it off the window. What a great job by Murray to penetrate that zone. If you're going to play zone, you cannot allow that dribble penetration. It'll kill you. Into the front court. And Justin Haynes misses the layup. Gus, he was worried about those guys coming to block the shot. Buford. <laughs> those long arms, Gus, just reached out there and snatched that one up. Buford, a 19-point-a-game scorer. He is also the career leader at Creighton in steals, and he showed you why right there. Good anticipation. Corey Brandon, a senior from St. Louis, Missouri in the game. Buford. They swing it. Carla Conovus, Sears. Backside rebound to Smiley. Murray. Murray. Johnson get down the court. And he can't hang on to the ball. One thing Louisville loves to do, that's break out quickly. Cameron Murray takes a seat, and off the bench jumps Marcus Maben, a sophomore from Clarksville, Tennessee. And in the last 12 games, he's been averaging 15 points per game. He's been a big difference coming off the bench for Louisville. One of the problems, Denny Crum says, that his team has is why they've got this balanced scoring. They can't get everybody going at the same time. Denny told us yesterday that he thought the key in this tournament is to get everybody playing well all at the same time because if you don't, you're out. Brandon. Alakonovas for three. Got it! That one almost hit the top of the ceiling here. Gus, he came off the bench in the conference tournament and did a great job for Creighton, and obviously he's picked up right where he left off. Five points very quickly off the bench for Creighton. Louisville up by a deuce. Maven down the lane. Tony Williams, they get on him quickly. Skip pass into the corner. Maven deep and air ball. Good block out by Heen. Saved by Carla Conovis. Sears. Bounce pass inside and it was an in five. That's going to be Eric Johnson picking up the foul. We mentioned that Louisville likes to get out and run. Well, Gus Creighton, they average 77 points a game, too. They don't mind getting out and getting down the court a little bit themselves. Get your updated brackets in the tournament tracker, plus up to the second live scores at cbs.sportsline.com or on America Online at keyword CBS Sportsline. Boy, Buford really struggling with his shot early in the game. Gus Louisville paying a lot of attention to him. Buford forcing it a little bit early. Inside, Sanders rattles out. Buford snatches it down. Buford from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Four times he's been all-conference in the Missouri Valley Conference. And here's a guy that Coach Altman told us yesterday they almost didn't give him a scholarship. <laughs> That's right. Alakonovas, nice catch down low. Leans in. Got it over the lip of the rim and in. Left-handed shot creeps right over the rim, Gus. Carla Conovis now with seven points. And we're tied at 15. Nereus Carla Conovis, a junior from Racina, Lithuania. Here Braden with the half-court press. One shot, no good. Sanders, rebound, and new shot clock. Williams, ball fake. Wide open, count it. And That's then, a two. And I'm telling you what, Louisville's doing a great job moving the ball against the Creighton zone. Creighton trying to press, and Louisville beating it. They're getting open jump shots, and they can really shoot the ball. Buford down the lane, jump stop, double pumped. Ball tipped out Sears to Buford. And Williams with the backside rebound. Boy, Look at the tempo in this game. Buford hasn't been anywhere close. 
Sanders. Rather, Johnson to Sanders. Sanders doing a great job on the offensive boards early in the game. What a good ball movement by those guys. Outstanding passing team. And Sanders, Alex Sanders, the senior, with the rebound, but traveling is the call. Ten minutes, 48 seconds remaining in the first half. Louisville leading Creighton by two. Coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship is sponsored by Chevy Blazer. AT&T Personal Network. Applebee's Neighborhood Grill and Bar and by Enterprise Rent-A-Car. And welcome back to the Orlando Arena in Louisville, up by two. Gus Johnson along with Dan Bonner, and so far you can tell that these two teams want to get up and down the floor. Gus, both teams average about 80 points a game. We expected them to get up and down the court, and they have so far. And for a report on Nate Johnson, let's go to Barry Booker. Thanks, Gus. Nate Johnson has been taken out of the game. He's got some congestion in his chest, having trouble breathing. They're going to get him an inhaler and, and expect him to be back in the game. All right, 10.45 to go, first half of play. Cardinals up by two. A trap on the sideline. And Sears gets a quick timeout. Louisville's pressure has bothered Creighton. They created a couple of steals with it early in the game, and they very nearly got one right there. Emmy Award winner John Larroquette returns to television as a royal pain and innkeeper with an attitude. Don't miss the series premiere of Pain Monday after Raymond on CBS. And Denny Crum, he's been here before. Two national championships, six Final Fours. He won the national title in 80 and 86. And remember in 86, it was Purvis Ellison as a freshman doing it for him. Ben Walker around the screen, leans in and kisses it off the glass. What a tough shot by Ben Walker. And Dana Altman told us yesterday that Ben Walker, he thought, was one of the big keys, that Walker would have to have a big game if they were going to be able to beat Louisville today. Because he is athletic and he matches up very well with this Louisville team, despite being only 6'2". Now Creighton stays in the zone, a 1-2-2 or 3-2 zone. Look, Buford out of the game. And Walker playing that point spot there. Williams penetrating, kicks it to Smiley. Williams to tip to Maven. New shot clock for Louisville. Thus far, just the domination on the offensive boards by Louisville. Touch pass, Williams on the baseline, and he knocks it in. Tony Williams, Tony Williams Jr. from Louisville, Kentucky. Hit four threes versus University of North Carolina Charlotte in their conference tournament. Ended with 19 points. So Creighton 21 and 8 inside Sears. Alakanovas. He's already hit one three-point basket in the game, but too much dribbling with the guards around. Cameron Murray picked his pocket inside. Smiley off the glass. Count it and the foul. That's the previous basket by Louisville, a perfect illustration of how the Cardinals have attacked so very well. Excellent passing, the pass inside to Sanders, and then right out to the left-handed Tony Williams. And this is another example, running a little bit in the fast break. Now you find Smiley on the inside. Louisville, one of the country's outstanding passing teams, and they're showing you why today. So Kevin Smiley, the junior from Louisville, who averages two points a game, already at his average, trying to go over it, and he doesn't. Locked out at the free throw line by Sears. 9.08 to go, first half of play, 21-17. Creighton out of the Missouri Valley Conference, taking on Louisville out of Conference USA. The winner to play Maryland. Nate Johnson back in the game. Lost it, and last touch by the Blue Jays. Gus Dana Altman's team, unlike Louisville, not doing a very good job passing the ball early in the game. They've had guys open inside, but they haven't gotten them the ball at the proper times. Louisville with that great quickness. Smiley. Creighton still packing it in the zone. 16 on the shot clock. Murray. He's the floor general. 
Williams deep in the corner, short, rebounded inside by Duck Swenson. Just as you look at that Creighton zone move, it really doesn't have anybody inside attacking. They're passing the ball around the perimeter, taking those jump shots. So Buford starts the offense on the wing. Buford has missed his last four shots, only one for six. Walker got the step, pushes off, and it's knocked out of bounds by Cameron Murray. Walker only six feet two, Gus, but he is a very powerful young man. Weighs 200 pounds. And his coaches challenged him to improve his play, and he did. Buford jump hook inside. And a jump hook is exactly the word for it, Gus. He just jumped right up over top of everybody inside. Buford at 6'5", but when he elevates, I don't know that anybody out there for Louisville is going to get up to block the shot. Close to a 40-inch vertical leap. Williams across the lane, tipped away into the hands of Buford. Well, he just dribbled that off the ball of Donnie Johnson. Six turnovers now for Louisville. Walker picks up his dribble. Donnie Johnson finds Buford. Deep three. Rims out. Walker rebound. Oh, and great tip. Swinson tips it in. Because he almost got himself horizontal trying to tip that baby in, but Walker, give him credit for keeping the ball alive. That 6-2 fella can really rebound very, very effectively. Ties it at 21. Back pass. Murray. Cameron Murray. Nate Johnson for three. And it's rebounded by Buford again. Swenson really has made his presence felt the last couple of possessions after a slow start for the big guy in this game. Walker taking his time. Cross court. Buford baseline. Blocked. And jump ball is the call. And the defense will get that one, so that's another turnover for Creighton. 6.44 to go in the first half of play. They're running and gunning here in Orlando. Six forty-four to go in the first half, tied at twenty-one apiece. Creighton and Louisville, and a look at the data bank. Because we talked about the Louisville tradition in the NCAA tournament, and Denny Crown number three all time in NCAA tournament appearances, and of course, from a coaching standpoint, we've also got Bob Knight here in Orlando coaching his Indiana Hoosiers. We'll see them later on this evening against George Washington. Denny Crum, forty-two and twenty-one. In the NCAA tournament. And right now, his Cardinals locked up in a pretty nice battle with Creighton. Cameron Murray passed up the three point shot. What a great run Louisville had through the decade of the 80s, Gus, with those two national championships and four Final Four appearances. Harold Griffith. Duncan Stein, remember him? Oh, hey, that's <laughs> dynamite team. Boy, he was fun to watch. Sanders from deep. Loose ball, and it's rebounded by Buford. Buford doing a good job on the glass so far. He's got three rebounds. And Walker went all the way down the court, Gus, and he's not looking for the ball. And Dana Altman knows that in a game like this, it has been up and down. If you run down into the offensive zone, you better turn and take a look for the ball. Dana Altman spent four years as the head coach at Kansas State, but decided to come back to Nebraska. He's from Nebraska, he's from Wilbur, Nebraska. He wanted to come back and be closer to home. Here's that zone again for Creighton. They played man-to-man -man early, but Louisville shot them right out of that defense. Cameron Murray, Maben, Johnson, Johnson, and Edward on the floor. Nate Johnson, baseline jumper, short. Buford, his fourth rebound. Boy, what a great job by Buford to chase that one down. It wasn't just so much matter, Gus, of jumping up to get it, but he had to chase after it as well. Walker, stripped from behind to Buford. One dribble, pull-up jumper. And Maven comes up to Johnson. Jump stop off the glass and in. Boy, that was a pretty shot, Gus. Very no, nice. Until you've tried to do that, you have no appreciation for how hard that is to do that kind of a jump stop and get the bank. Nate Johnson with 10. Walker driving to the basket, and Johnson got it on the glass. 
crowd wanted a goaltending call. Cameron Murray. And remember, Johnson has been out of this game with respiratory problems. He doesn't, certainly doesn't look like he's having any trouble. Bob inside, Deion Edward lays it in. And Louisville quickly gets into the press, and it pays off for him. Cameron Murray with the steal. 25-21, Cardinals. Skip pass, Murray. And Donnie Johnson tracks it down. Almost had it stolen away. What quick hands. Louisville really playing very aggressively. Like they've turned it up a notch or two, Gus, here in the last couple of possessions. And Creighton needs to get something going on the offensive end. Number 12, Brandon, and number 11, Swenson. So Swenson inbounding right in front of the Creighton bench along with Sears. And Sears has had all he can handle with this Louisville press. He's actually done a very good job, but he has had no time to do anything except simply try to protect the basketball. Only player in Creighton history for two straight years. Buford enough to try to slam it. Knocked out of bounds. Last touch by Creighton. Buford's claiming the shot was blocked, Gus, but he just lost the ball as he was going up for a dunk. A very good screen. Buford is going to come around here, and Carl Economist does a great job picking off his man, but Buford loses control, so another turnover. 25-21, Louisville. Cardinals finished the season 19-10, 11-5 in Conference USA. They were second in the American division. Lost the Conference USA championship game to the University of North Carolina at Charlotte. 68-59 in Birmingham. Five to shoot, Murray. Up top and traveling is the call on Edwards. Three minutes, 39 seconds remaining in the first half of play. Cardinals up 25-21. Three minutes and 39 seconds remaining in the first half of play. Louisville leading it 25-21 over Creighton. Louisville coming into this tournament. And they are a seventh seed and Creighton a 10. So Louisville's pressure, I think, has had the effect. They've only had a couple of steals, three to be precise. They've converted them into baskets, but they've really made it difficult for the Blue Jays to run their offense. Rodney Buford with the ball now, only two for 10. Four points, he averages 19 on the season. Tournament and conference, most viable player. Oh, Swenson was all alone under the basket. That's what I'm talking about with Louisville's pressure. Buford never even saw Swenson all alone under the basket. Brandon to Buford, seven to shoot. Buford across the lane, down the lane, jump hook. Malakonovas rebound, back to Buford, and the short jump shot, too strong. Let's make that two for 12, Gus. Brandon almost with the steal. Sometimes that little in-between shot is the hardest one to hit. And you notice it looked like he was trying to put a little extra arc on that shot as well because he was afraid of getting it blocked. And Dana Altman going to take his leading scorer out of the game for a rest. So Cameron Murray, Maven, Williams, Smiley, and Edward on the court. Louisville, Williams, wide open three. Got it. And that's seven points in a row now for Louisville. Creighton has had some opportunities. They just haven't been able to get the ball to go in the basket. Tony Williams with nine points. And the Cardinals up 28-21. Steal by Edward. Behind the back. Big fella to the basket. And he's fouled. Nice looking play though. Gus big guy walked the tight rope, kept the ball in bounds, then the behind the back dribble. And the game summary, Louisville, six points off turnovers. They force nine. And they've turned the ball over seven times themselves, but have not given up any points off turnovers. That's the difference so far. And Edward going to the line right here. He can get a couple more points off turnovers. Make it seven. 2.19 to go in the first half. Nate Johnson back into the game, and Kevin Smiley takes the seat. 
Johnson, one of the fellas that really helped get Louisville off to a very quick start, got 10 points already in the game. Second free throw, in and out. Carla Conovus with the rebound to Louis Sears. Louisville's run now, 8-0. Walker loses it. And a steal by Brandon. Slippery ball right now, cross-court Walker. Ball fake to the bucket, wide open, missed the layup, got it again, and again, and he commits the foul. Jesse had three cracks at it on the inside. Remember, he is only six feet two. He's trying to power it up there against taller opposition, but he had three cracks at it, couldn't get it to go down. Dane Altman wondering what it's going to take to score a point. Buford getting ready to come back in for Creighton. And Maven can't hang on to it. Goes right through his hands on the baseline. Right now, seems like that ball is a little slippery. Guys aren't concentrating on catching it. I guess I think guys are trying to make plays before they grab hold of the ball. Well, that's physical defensive pressure right there. Buford for three, right off the bench. Got his own rebound, taken away, hits the deck. Carla Conovas. Just a little too much one-on-one -on -one play, I think, on both sides. People trying to spin into the lane. Defenders much too quick out there. They're knocking the ball away. Louisville by eight. They're on an 8-0 run. Inside, Swenson banks it in. He's been open in there a couple of times, Gus, and that's really the first time in this game that the Blue Jays have tried to get it inside to him. Blue Jays get back into the press. Williams. And Nate Johnson. 54 on the game clock, 18 on the shot clock. Nine to shoot now for the Cardinals. Tony Williams dumps it down. Maven got it again and put it in. 31-23, Louisville. And the shot clock turned off, 21 and counting. Gus, I think this is an important possession for Creighton. They've struggled scoring the last about five or six minutes, and they would really like to make sure that they get, that they get in the locker room, maybe only down five or six. Seven to go. Blocked. Jump shot, block into the hands of Edward. And that's the end of the first half of play. 31-23 Louisville. Now let's go to Greg Gumbel standing by in New York. So the Cardinals of Louisville with a 31-23 lead on Creighton. We will take you from there to Key Arena in Station. You're watching CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship. Championship is sponsored by Cadillac Escalade, Pizza Hut, Consico, and by Hertz. Ready for the second half. Louisville up by eight moments ago. Our Barry Booker talked to Creighton head coach Dana Altman. Coach Altman, your leading scorer, Rodney Buford, with only four points. What do you do to get him going in the second half? Well, we were all a little tight through the first half, and uh, you know, I think we just got to slow down a little bit on the offensive end and get some better looks. We had some good looks. Rodney just didn't have much luck finishing plays, but if we just slow down a little bit on the offensive end, I think we can get some things going. Gus, Gus Johnson, Dan Bonner, Buford, 2 of 13 in the first half. He got plenty of attempts. He got plenty of attempts, but Dana Altman was right, Gus. They were really hurrying, and I think it was the Louisville defense that forced them into hurrying. They've just got to relax a little bit. And the halftime statistics. Take a look. Louisville shooting 50%, but the Jays doing extremely well in the paint, leading that battle 20 to 12. Gus, not really a whole lot of physical type activity in terms of banging and grinding. Neither one of these teams like to play that way. Only six total fouls called in the first half. You saw there were only three free throws attempted. So Creighton with the ball to begin the second half of play. Walker Sears 
Swenson, Buford, and Johnson for the Blue Jays. Cameron Murray, Sanders, Maven, Williams, and Nate Johnson for Louisville. Swenson on the wing. Buford. Goes baseline. Falls and loses it out of bounds. Dana Altman wondering just exactly how that can be simply the ball out of bounds. Buford obviously trying to take the ball quickly to the basket in the second half. A very explosive guy going to the basket. They really got tied up in there. Nate Johnson with the basket. And the Cardinals lead it 33 to 23. Louisville, the score was tied at 21, and Louisville scored eight unanswered points in the first half of play to extend their lead to eight. Creighton with six minutes and 13 seconds without scoring, and now Creighton trailing 33-23. Louisville with the ball. And that's another example, right, that you saw right there of Creighton hurrying a little bit on the offensive end. They're rushing everything. Gus, and that's been the story of the game for Creighton. The Louisville defense pretty effective, not because they're stealing the ball, but because they're forcing Creighton to play more quickly than they want to. Creighton's best player, two of 13 from the field, Rodney Buford. In the first half of play, he has four points. Murray, hesitation in the corner. Williams and Sears with the rebound. Buford. Reverse it. Up top, Buford. Ball fake. Sears, quick release. And it's last touch by the Blue Jays. In our first game, Maryland defeated Valparaiso. Terrence Morris, 18 points, 10 rebounds. They play the winner of this one. St. John Sanford, Indiana, George Washington still to come. Right now, the Cardinals look strong. Up by 10, Murray hops in the lane. Great deal to Maven, but an offensive foul. Just guys get in the lane area and they jump up in the air while they're flying forward. You gotta get in that lane, make a good jump stop and make the passer shot. Eighteen oh four to go in the second half of play. Louisville on top by 10, 33 to 23. They went on an 8-0 run in the first half of play, and Creighton with six minutes and 13 seconds without scoring a basket. Louisville led by eight at halftime. Once again, their best player for Creighton. Two of 13, but that young man doing well, Ben Walker, the sophomore from Oak Creek, Wisconsin, with the layup. Walker now with six points. Yes, that was another tough shot, but Creighton struggling so much to score. They'll take anything they can get. Cross court, Murray. Look at the great ball movement. Once again, Johnson. And three seconds to call on Sanders camping out in the lane. Gus, against that zone, Denny Crum's team had four guys out on the perimeter and only one guy inside, so it wasn't hard for the official to watch Sanders in there. He was the only guy around. Buford over the half-court line, straight to the basket, takes off, and an offensive foul, no basket. Good job by Tony Williams establishing position. Justin Buford really pressing very hard right here. He's struggling with his shooting, thinks he sees an opportunity to get to the basket, and Williams is simply standing there waiting. 33-25. 17-14 to go in the second half. Louisville, out of Conference USA, 19-10 and 10 on the season. 11-5 and 5 in the conference. Inside, William double clutched off the glass and good. Louisville able to get the ball inside against the zone on that particular play. Creighton zone, not really very aggressive, Gus. They're sort of standing around. The entry pass, they collapse to the ball, but Johnson not doing a very good job with the foul. The cutters, everybody just sort of standing there. Johnson doesn't go to the man with the ball until it's too late. So Johnson picks up his first. And the free throw for Williams is good. And what a game it's been so far for Tony Williams. He has 12 already. Outlet pass to Buford. Into the front court. 
Guarded by Williams. Gus Creighton has to find a way to get themselves on track on the offensive end, and a good way might be to try to get the ball inside to Swenson. Indecision on offense right now for Creighton. There's Swenson, and a nice layup. Swenson. Used his body to shield away the defender. Gus, he's only 210 pounds. The Louisville guy's much stronger, but Swenson is 6 feet 11. The tallest Louisville player is 6 feet 7. Pull up jump shot. Williams in and out and back in. Tony Williams on fire. 14 points at 9 at halftime. And this offensive display by Louisville really keeping the pressure on Creighton. That foul's called against Nate Johnson. Fouling Carla Conovus. Carla Conovus came off the bench and had seven points in the first half for Creighton Gus. He was the best offensive threat. Buford, Swenson, Carla Conovus, Walker, and Sears. Buford. It's short. Rebounded by Murray. Nate Johnson. And Nate Johnson with 12. Gus, this is a team that shoots 47% as a team from the field. In this day and age, that's pretty much remarkable. And Ben Walker dribbles it out of bounds. Louisville looks strong. 15-56 to go. They're up 40-27. Here in the second half of play and the tournament summary. Jim Beheim's Syracuse Orange been eliminated. No Cinderella, Cinderella year for Valpo as they lose to Maryland. Tom Davis, though, still alive at Iowa. They defeat UAB. Remember, this is Tom Davis's last year as the head coach at the University of Iowa. Gus, and keep in mind, as a head coach, a Tom Davis team has never lost a first-round NCAA tournament game. They'll move on to play the winner of the Arkansas Siena game. They'll be out in Denver on Saturday. And a steal for Buford. Let's see if he can get an easy basket here. And he does. Now maybe that'll ignite him. Gus, the struggle here for Creighton has been on offense. Louisville is an up-tempo team. They're going to continue to play an up-tempo style. So if Creighton can just get it in gear offensively, Louisville will help them get back in the game because Louisville's not going to pull it out and slow it down. Cameron Murray taking a look at the scores. Arkansas leading Siena. Murray rising fire off the side of the rim. Kala Conovus with the rebound. That's the first step, a defensive stop and the rebound. Now Creighton's got to put together a little run of their own on the offensive end and get back in this game. And notice Buford got his points from the defensive end. Ball knocked away and out of bounds. We stay right here. Gus, I think it's a good idea by Creighton to try to punch the ball inside, but they probably need to be trying to post the 6'11 Swenson up in there as opposed to the 6'2 Walker. Swenson averages 12 points per game. And Tony Williams at 6'6 is trying to guard him. He's from Holiday, North Dakota. And a whistle and foul away from the ball against Creighton. I think they called that foul against Swenson. A lot of traffic on the inside. Swenson's first foul. Full court pressure by the Blue Jays. Williams. And the Louisville Cardinals break it easily. Very well schooled on the press. Gus, as well as they pass the ball, they're going to be a hard team to pressure. They handle it pretty well. They pass it well. And then when you beat the pressure, they can sure shoot it. Everybody out there can hit the three. Williams, baseline, got the step, stripped away. Into the hands of Buford. Remember, the winner of this game plays Maryland. And they love to press all 94 feet. Swenson really working hard against Sanders, trying to get open inside. And Walker, five. Beginning March 30th, Craig Kilborn brings his unique comedy style to CBS Late Night. Former college basketball player, a cable sportscaster, and comedy star, and soon the host of his own late night talk show, catch the premiere of The Late Late Show with Craig Kilborn, March 30th, after David Letterman, right here on CBS. 14.08 to go, second half of play. Cardinals leading the Blue Jays 40 to 29. 
Louisville stays in the man-to-man -man defense. Buford flashes across the lane, won't go. That's got a bounds, last touch by Creighton. When Dane Altman is really upset about that particular call, he's over there feeling as if all the breaks are going against his team right at the moment. And Sanders looks for guard, and he has Cameron Murray. Cameron's brother Tracy played at UCLA, now is in the NBA. His cousin Lamont also plays pro basketball as well in the NBA. So a basketball family. Back pass, Sanders, behind the shoot. Murray takes it. Rebounded by Buford. Inside, and Johnson is whacked and goes to the ground. And he's been suffering from back problems, which has affected his conditioning. It has. Creighton really does need to try to get the ball up the court, but this is a very difficult pass. That is well defended, and that's been part of the problem for Creighton today. Very well defended as we get a look at it from a different angle. They're trying to force too many things, Gus. They just have to slow down and attack where they have the advantage. And Nate Johnson has just picked up two quick fouls. Inside Johnson, and he lays it in. Donnie Johnson, the junior from Omaha, makes it a nine-point game. Murray trapped in the backcourt. Justin was, and when Creighton has been able to slow down long enough to get the ball inside, they have had great success down there on the low post. And the Blue Jays back into the zone. Shot clock down at 15. Louisville not noted as a great half-court team, and there Sanders is going to pick up a foul. And Sanders hooking his man on the baseline. Good screen by Buford. He hasn't scored very much, but that was a nice screen against that allowed Donnie Johnson to get open, just picked off the Cardinal defender. 16 fouls against Louisville. And we have 12 minutes and 43 seconds to go in the second half. Nine-point lead for the Cardinals. Buford pops out on the wing. Guarded by Sanders. Pull up jump shot. Baseline, and he got it. That's a deuce. And Buford, that's one thing that Creighton could really use is Buford picking it up on the offensive end. Creighton now, the 2-2-1 press. Made basket sets up the press for him. 6-0 run for Creighton in the corner. And Johnson swishes it through. That's Eric Johnson with the three-point basket. Gus, that young man came to Louisville. All he could do is dunk, and now he's one of the top three-point shooters on the team. Shoots 41% from the arc on the season, 32 of 78. And another foul. One and one situation for Creighton Louisville over the limit. And it's interesting to note with 12 minutes to go, from this point on, every foul, Creighton gets an opportunity to shoot. Creighton has had such a difficult struggle, Gus, trying to score. They're a 71% free throw shooting team, so you figure this will work to their advantage. And the first free throw is good for Corey Brandon, a senior from St. Louis. Plays about 23 minutes a game, backup guard. Second one rims out, and Brandon with the rebound. Takes the long three. Oh, and Eric Johnson comes down with it. Because Creighton has only made one three-point basket today, and on the year, they've produced 30% of their offense from behind the three-point arc, so Louisville doing a great job taking away a key part of the Creighton offense. Amber Murray still running the show for Louisville. Plays virtually the entire game, and he's doing it this season with a stress fracture in his foot. Skip pass, Murray. Five to shoot. In the corner, Johnson, pump fake. Got it away. Rebounded backside by Smiley. And a foul on the sideline. It's Buford picks up the foul. 11-14 to go, second half of play. 43-34. Let's join Barry Booker. 
Thanks, Gus. You notice the patch on the right hip of the Creighton University players. That patch is in honor of their former team physician, Dr. Lee Bevilacqua, who passed away at a men's soccer game against Vanderbilt in October. The team has dedicated this season to his memory. He is a member of the University Sports Hall of Fame. Back to you, Gus. All right, Barry, for 32 years, Dr. Bevilacqua was the volunteer team physician. They have honored him with the patch on their basketball pants. 11.08 to go here in the second half of play. 43-34, Louisville leads Creighton. Creighton switches to the man-to-man -man defense. Played that zone defense for much of the game. Inside, loose ball. Save. Out of bounds. Carla Conovas with the chance to pick it up, but he thought the ball had ricocheted off of a Louisville player. Well, I guess if you have a chance to pick it up, you've got to pick it up. Williams inbounding. And a steal. Sears to Buford. Gus, you just get the idea from the flow of this game. You have the field that if they could just score some and they get a three there from Walker, the Creighton could be right back in this game. Full court pressure. Made baskets. Set up that press for Creighton. Cameron Murray wheeling in traffic. Deals it down. Turns it over. Sears with the ball on the baseline. Boy, what a great recovery by Creighton. Sears. Carla Conovas. Ten thirteen remaining in the second half of play. Louisville, they've led by as many as 13 points, led by eight at halftime. But Creighton coming back, and they now trail 43 to 37. Gus, this was a game that started out with a very fast pace. Each team scoring almost at will. Then Louisville went on that run and went up by 13. And for Creighton, it has been a struggle. But here they get another steal. Buford. Swenson getting a hand on the inbounds pass. He's 6'11 with the wingspan of a condor. Here's Walker inside. Lost it edge. Kicks it out. Carla Conovas. Ball fake. Freeze himself. Got and here come the Blue Jays. And a whistle and foul. And the bracket here in the South region in Orlando. Maryland winning today over Valpo. They play the winner of this game. St. John Sanford, Indiana, George Washington later on tonight. And in that Maryland game, Terrence Morris, 18 points, 10 rebounds, three assists as Maryland won easily. Also double-figure games from Steve Francis and Laurent Prophet. Maryland looked pretty good. Creighton now goes back to the zone defense. They showed that man-to-man -man defense one time. And now, boy, they just Johnson threw an looked elbow. like he took a swing. Creighton, in the meantime, on a 12-3 run. And look at this elbow from Nate Johnson. Gus Creighton has really been doing a great job with their defensive pressure. Nate Johnson calls the timeout right in front of the bench, and Swenson goes over and tries to get at the ball. The officials didn't call anything on that particular occasion. Now, Saturday on CBS, the LAPD's dream team. Take that back Monday on CBS. TV Guide says Raymond Reigns. Find out why they're calling it the best season yet for Everybody Loves Raymond. Now Creighton back into the man-to-man -man defense. Dana Altman trying to switch things up to throw the Louisville offense off balance. Williams, top shot. Swenson. A shot, shot clock, clock violation, and the officials have They did not it. catch it. Shot clock ran down. Does not reset on a blocked shot. Sears inside. Swenson leaves it. Breaks it home. Plus the foul. Gus and the Creighton Blue Jays are really pumped up right now. We said they were really struggling on offense. If they could just get it going a little bit, they'd get back in the game. How many times have they gone inside today successfully? Swenson doing a great job. Sanders simply not tall enough to stop the play. 
And there is some emotion right there. Doug Swenson grew up working on the family farm in Holiday, North Dakota, where they raised cattle, corn, wheat. His mom, Ellen, and his dad, David, they say they need help on the farm, but they want their son to be able to pursue his dream of playing college basketball. And he's got his team within one. And a timeout. Timeout Louisville. And Sanders just popped Swenson again. The last time he swung and missed, that time he elbowed him in the stomach. And the Creighton coaching staff is asking the officials why there are, there are not any calls being made. Yeah, but that is a tough farm boy, and <laughs> the elbow is not going to keep keep him from getting on that court. <laughs> How about that? Now, Saturday on CBS, the LAPD's Dream Team hits the road to expose the mob, and Sammo Hung and Arsenio Hall could get caught in the crunch. An all-new martial law, Saturday on CBS. 8.54 to go, second half of play. Louisville, they've led by as many as 13, now by one. Gus and Louisville feels like they're being caught in the crunch right now. The Creighton defense turning up the tempo. Full court pressure by Creighton. Maven, double team. Nate Johnson in the front court. Louisville now in the zone. Or excuse me, Creighton in the zone. Louisville really leaves that middle wide open. 11 Four. on the shot clock. Four guys on the perimeter. Only one guy on the inside at the moment. Williams pull up three. Bang! Oh, big basket. Big time hoop. And now, since they've scored, this allows Louisville to set their press. Louisville up 46-42 now. Buford, who's really struggled shooting the basketball. Four of 17, he's their best player. And you know Dana Altman sitting over there thinking if Rodney will just get it going a little bit, we've really got a shot in this game. Averages 19 points per game. Walker. Forty-six, forty-two, Louisville. They've led by as many as 13, however. Creighton making a comeback right now. Creighton doing a little bit better job executing on offense. Now that is a tough shot right there. Got his own rebound. And Walker can't put it home. Beautiful gun. Jump stop. Elevates and knocks it down. Just right at the moment, Creighton just out scrapping Louisville for these loose balls. Rodney Buford, 5 of 18. He averages 19 a game, but has struggled with his shot today. But Creighton right in this game, they trail by a deuce. Guess you really wonder sometimes how a game can turn around so completely that crisp, efficient Louisville offense just hasn't existed in the last 10 minutes or so of this game. Louisville led by eight at halftime. Skip pass. Johnson rising fire airborne. Carla Donovis with the rebound. Creighton with a chance to tie or take the lead with a three. Here's Buford off his foot into the hands of Walker. Walker forced it up. Yes, and that's the perfect description. Walker really did force it up, and now Louisville's got a fast break. Tony Williams, he's fouled from behind. And Rodney... And it's the fourth foul on Walker. And a look at the South region here in Orlando. Maryland winning the day over Valpo easily. They play the winner of this game, a 7-10 game. St. John Sanford and Indiana George Washington coming up next. Ben Walker goes out with his fourth personal foul, and that really was a fourth shot, Gus, and he didn't need to take it because Rodney Buford was all alone on the wing, and Walker never saw it. And Tony Williams gets the first one to go. He has 18 points. Nine in the first half, and nine right now in the second half of play with Tony Williams, the junior, from Louisville. Second one, no good. Rebounded by Will by Johnson, Eric Johnson. A new shot clock for Louisville. Zone again for Creighton, Gus. 
They've had some success with the zone defense in the second half. Edward flashes across the lane, looks backside. Murray cut off by Carla Conovis. Ten to shoot. Murray hops in the lane. Williams forced it up. Rebounded by Donnie Johnson. Gus, that was great reaction to the ball by the Creighton defense. Carla Conovis kicks it out. Landon for the tie. Carla Conovis with the rebound. And a 20-second timeout called by Creighton. Dana Altman encouraging his troops, Gus. He can see their struggles on offense. Just wants to make sure they get a good look at the basket here. Don't forget, coming up tonight, here are the game threes. Murray State, Ohio State. Sanford against St. John's, New Mexico and Missouri. And Penn taking on Florida. So the Creighton Blue Jays, 21 and 8 on the season, 11 and 7 in the Missouri Valley Conference. They won their league record fifth MVC tournament, beating Evansville 70 to 61. This is their 10th NCAA appearance where they have an 8 and 10 record. And they came into this game red hot, winners of six straight. Down 47 44 right now. Let's see if they try to punch the ball inside, Gus, where they have had some success. Sears down the lane, and he got it! That is a big-time drive to the basket by Sears, who hasn't really looked for his offense much today, Gus. First bucket of the game for Sears. Edward trapped in the corner. Murray. Two points in the last 11 minutes. Two field goals, rather, in the last 11 minutes. Gus Creighton has been able to make Louisville play the half-court game, and Louisville not nearly as effective playing that way as they are running up and down. Seven on the shot clock. Murray throws it up. Rebounded by Buford. Buford, his offensive game has not been on, but he's really been owning the boards. He has five. And he walks it up the floor himself. Well, Gus Creighton has crept closer and closer and closer, but they haven't been able to tie or take the lead just yet. Brandon backs it out into the corner. Boy, that's a nice job by Mabin. Brandon had the side cleared for him. He was going to the basket. They clear it out for him again. Six to go. Brandon, a lot of dribbling. Forced it up. Off the glass, no good. And it's rebounded by Mabel. Can't come much closer than that to get the ball to oh, go down, Gus. Oh, my goodness. Now Denny Crum wants a timeout. Three minutes, 52 seconds to go in the second half of play. We've got a one-point game in Orlando. And welcome back. The game summary. Louisville shooting 48%. But the points in the paint being dominated by the Creighton Blue Jays. Gus Creighton really has had good luck getting the ball inside, and their, their struggles on offense all day long. They haven't been able to hit from the outside. We mentioned they get 30% of their points on the year from beyond the three-point arc, but they've been forced to go inside today. And in the last 12 minutes, Creighton has outscored Louisville 19-7 to pull within one point. 3.40 to go. Creighton stays in the zone defense. The winner takes on Maryland. Nate Johnson. Backside, Murray. And the ball stolen away by Buford. Gus Buford has really struggled on the offensive end, but he's got three or four steals in the game. He's got five or six rebounds. He has continued to help Creighton. They get seven rebounds for Buford. Well, they almost lost the ball there, Gus. He held the ball out. The Louisville guy's been paying attention. They could have taken it. Creighton with the chance to take the lead right here. Walker down the lane.
Gus, I'll tell you what, the last couple of trips down the court, Dana Altman's kids have tried some clear outs. The last time for Brandon, this time for Walker. We've talked about Walker's great strength, and he uses that strength right here to get his head and shoulders past and then power the ball up to the basket. are on a 22-7 run in the last 13 minutes. They lead it 49-47. Doug Swenson guarding the ball. Nate Johnson ready to throw it in for Louisville. He can run the baseline. Maven tripped. Make it Murray tripped. 3 to go in the second half of play. Creighton on top, 49-47. They've trailed Louisville by as many as 13 points, but have staged a great comeback here in the second half of play. Gus, one of the things that Denny Crum has seen happen to his team is Creighton was able to start scoring, and when they started scoring, they could set their pressure, and they've done a great job with their pressure disrupting the Louisville attack. And Murray misses the free throw. Carla Conovis with the rebound. And the last couple of possessions, what we've seen from, from Creighton is simply spreading the court, trying to get some clear outs for Walker or Brandon. Ryan Sears to Carla Conovis, who came off the bench in the first half and had quick, seven quick points. Walker slips. Cameron Murray the other way off the glass, but he's fouled. With 2.37 to go in the second half of play. And once again, the game reset. Just the interesting thing, both of the teams with nine fouls will be in the double bonus on the next foul for each team. We expected this to be a very high-scoring game, and it started out that way, Gus, but the offense has disappeared. First free throw for Murray is good. Both of these teams average 77 points per game. <laughs> We're not getting anywhere close to that. <laughs> exactly. 49-48. Murray with the chance to tie it on the free throw. And he does. And now on the made free throw, Louisville's able to set its press. Walker. And he walks it over the half-court line. Looking for Buford. Walker has 11 points tonight, or today. A lot of dribbling going on there, Gus. Not a lot of passing right at the moment. When one guy handles the ball so much, everybody else tends to stand around. Pull up three for Buford. And it goes! Holy mackerel! From downtown! 13 points! Buford, 5 of 18. Gus, that is his first three-point basket of the day. 2-11 to go in the second half of play. Blue Jays up 52-49. Reset, 2-11 to go. Both teams with nine team fouls. Creighton, they have 120 and one full. And Louisville, no 20s and one full. And the stat of the game, the second half shooting for the Blue Jays. Just the amazing thing about that stat is only 14 attempts for Louisville. For complete tournament coverage, go to cbs.sportsline.com. And here's Creighton with the pressure, and the Creighton pressure has been very effective in the second half, forcing the Louisville turnovers. Only 14 shot attempts in 18 minutes. Still a lot of time for both teams. Murray, stop and start, baseline runner. Loose ball, rebounded by Williams. And a new shot clock for the Cardinals. Gotta grab that ball. Floor getting awfully small on both ends. <laughs> <laughs> Pull up jumper for three, no good. And a whistle and foul inside against Cameron Murray. And that is an excellent call. Even though Murray had the inside position, that was a long rebound. And Murray is going to grab on to Walker. Denny Crum shaking his head right at the top of your screen. Murray now comes in, gets position set up, watch the rebound, kick out long, and Murray grabs Walker and knocks him down. That is an excellent call by the official. Walker, 61% free throw shoot. 
And the first is good. Walker, a sophomore from Oak Creek, Wisconsin. And he put more pressure on himself in the first half of the season to become a bigger part of the offense. He's so athletic, the coaches agreed with him. Inside, easy basket for Mabin. 120 to go in the second half, 54-51, and a foul. And Buford and company head into the front court to shoot free throws. It'll be Walker. And a look at the bracket in the south region here in Orlando. The winner of this game takes on Maryland, who beat Valpo today. St. John Samford and Indiana George Washington coming up later. Gus Walker goes to the line. He just made the two big free throws. And this Creighton team trailed by as many as 13 points in the first half of play, but somehow managed to get everybody involved, including Buford, who had a terrible first half shooting. And now they lead it. Maben elevates, got it back, and lays it in. Gus, the last two possessions, Louisville been able to get easy baskets by just driving through the zone. Three-point game. Carla Conovis, diagonal pass to Buford. And they want to milk some clock here. Yes, they want to milk some clock, but it's only a one possession game. They want to run it down and score. Now, Louisville doesn't want to foul. Alakanov is facing. Walker. Nine to shoot. Down the lane. Dumps it off. Buford. Oh. Short. And a foul inside. Good call. Sanders pushed off. Yes, he did. Swenson, who had such an effective first half in the low post, Gus, gets excellent position. Buford has not had a very good day shooting the ball, but Swenson doing what he needs to do, getting that inside position, and then is just pushed out of the way by Sanders. We know Doug Swenson steps to the line. He's a 76% free throw shooter on the year. Junior college transfer from... Halliday, North Dakota. With 30 seconds left in the game, guess he makes these two. He can make it difficult. And he makes the first. Now two possession game, barring a four point play. That's a good looking free throw for this situation. Not <laughs> bad. The knees start to wobble a little bit. Second one up, and in. 58-53. Now, Creighton doesn't want to foul, but they'd like to make Louisville run as much time off the clock as possible before a shot. You don't need a three here. Louisville needs to get it going. And an offensive foul. That may do it with 18 seconds to go. Gus, we've talked about turnovers. That's the 11th turnover for Louisville in the second half. Possibly the first upset of the day, Louisville. A number seven seed, Creighton number 10, and a foul in the backcourt, Sears. Will find his spot on the line. I guess Ryan Sears has been such an important part of this Creighton team this year. Great play before to recognize that Louisville was going to try to penetrate again, step in and draw the charge, and he's been the guy who had to bear the brunt of the Louisville pressure today, and all in all, he's done a real fine job. And Sears, first free throw is good. This man, the only guard in Creighton school history to have more steals than turnovers two straight years. Second free throw good as well. The Blue Jays in good shape with 16 remaining. Maven down the lane, dunks it with two hands. That's there still time. It's a two possession game. And Sears fouled quickly with 10.3 to go. Number three. Five point lead.
And the Chevrolet most valuable players of the game, Rodney Buford, 13 points, 8 rebounds, 5 steals, complete game for him, although he did struggle on the offensive end. And Tony Williams for Louisville. Second first free throw good for Sears. And the score was tied at 49 with two minutes and 37 seconds left. And Buford hit the big three-pointer. And Creighton has been up since. Williams shot good with 4.7 to go. And with 4.7 to go here in the second half, we step away. 62-58. The game reset. No timeouts remaining for Louisville, and they're down 62 to 58. The story in this game, Ben Walker with 12 second half points for Creighton, Rodney Buford with nine second half points, and the Blue Jays come back from 13 down from half court, and that'll do it. No time remaining on the clock. No time on the clock, and the officials... They play to the horn, Gus. They play to the horn, and that's it. <laughs> the horn doesn't work. The horn does not work. The final score, Creighton comes back after being down by 13 on the back of Ben Walker, as well as Rodney Buford. Walker with 12 second half points. Buford, their best player, with nine. And they win it 62 to 58. And they'll take on Maryland in the next round. Our final score, Creighton wins it 62 to 58. And the bracket in the South region in Orlando, Creighton, Maryland, will meet in the next round. St. John, Samford, Indiana, George Washington coming up next. Coming up, Greg Gumbel in New York. In against Crumb's team. This is Nate Johnson. He'll spot up with a shot right here. Louisville. Its largest lead, a 13-point lead, 40 to 27 over Dana Altman's club. Then Ben Walker knocks down the triple, the lead cut down to six. Moments later, as the bench gets fired up, Ryan Sears to Doug Swenson inside two. There's my guy Swenson, out. baby, inside the space eater. Look at that emotion. Look at that passion. March Madness, baby. Nothing like it. Walker driving this time gets the hoop, gets the foul again. Aggressive play by Creighton, just going to the glass time and again. And credit, credit, credit defense by Creighton because Louisville only had two field goals in an 11-minute stretch in the second half, and that's how they got back in it with a 19-6 run by Creighton. Are you see? Ryan Sears in the spot shadow covering Johnson slides off Johnson the change on Cameron Murray there's the defense you're talking about and Creighton marches on they just strangle Louisville down the stretch to win it by four and their MVP was brilliant in the tournament they've won seven in a row now Rodney Buford was six for 21 and yet they still beat a good Louisville team that was rejuvenated when they were declared eligible for NCAA tournament action nice job at the free throw line 10 for 10 in the final 90 seconds afterward Altman talking about the run that blew the game open well I you know I, I was upset with them and, and they were upset with themselves and uh you know, I just bit him a little bit and said that uh, we were embarrassing ourselves by how poorly we were playing and that we were a much more capable basketball team than what we were showing. Where the heck are Okay, they move on to the next round again. Maryland and Creighton. Altman, fifth year at Creighton. They've steadily improved every year, guys. This is a guy whose win total has increased each of his five years. Of course, he went to the NCAA tournament with Kansas State before leaving that program. And now Creighton, they get a chance to be giant killers, and that's a tough matchup. I'll tell you something. I thought Creighton really did a great job. Louisville lost his composure in the second half, and you can't do that at NCAA tournament games. And the fact that Creighton is now 7-1 and one against tournament teams, we talked about them mm -hmm. beating Oklahoma State as well as winning at Iowa. 
Creighton is on a roll winning seven in a row. They got a lot of confidence going this game, and this will be a tough game as we get ready for Maryland. Well, I think really, Digger, the important part of this game, Digger and Chris, is whether or not Creighton can make it a half-court game. That's the area that Maryland still has to prove to people that they can excel at. They really struggle when the game becomes a 45-foot game. They want to go 90 feet up and down, trap and pressure. But I'll tell you one thing, Creighton looks like they have the ability that they can make it a tempo game. And if they do, this will be interesting. So Gary Williams should right now get in the lobby of the hotel, get out there, stretch stretch out all the chairs and go out there and work on half court offense. But the thing is going to be this Louisville got out rebounded every game yeah. this season and Creighton wasn't challenged on the boards. I think when you take a look at Terrence Morris getting a double double that's going to be one challenge Creighton's going to face when they face Maryland. And Baxter inside has got to play big the space eater. We talked about Sunday being a big day for the Missouri Valley Conference getting in three teams. Well now their champion in the tournament Creighton has moved on to the second round with Southwest Missouri State Evansville still to play. We're coming back. We'll update that Stanford game. Highlights of more afternoon games when we continue.